Hello, friends. Uh, thank you so much for joining me here on this live stream. If you could let me know in the chat if you can see my cards here on the table in a pile. And if you can hear me, that would be really helpful. That way, um, I know that everything's going out to the world the way it should. Um, I see have a lot of people in the chat right now. I'm so happy to see so many people uh, joining us today. And we're going to talk about adding mixed media to watercolor. And the cards that I'm going to be adding mixed media to are they're, they're all from my new class, 30 Days to Better Watercolor. It's linked in the video description and it is 50% off until October 1st. So if you'd like to grab this class for half price, you can. I always launch my new classes at half price so that um, people, my, my followers, my subscribers can get the best price because there's nothing worse than paying full price and then a week later finding a sale. So I want to make sure that when the class comes out, all my subscribers get the best deal. Um, hoping everyone can hear me. Please let me know in the chat if you can. I know there's a little bit of a lag from when I broadcast to when it goes out. Hopefully, oh good, hearing me very clearly. Oh good, okay, yay. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions as we're going through this today, please type the word question in all caps, and then you can type your question just in regular letters, upper and lowercase letters. If you type the whole thing in all caps and YouTube might boot you out for spam. But if you just type the word question in all caps, when I'm looking at the chat, uh, as we go along, I can find all the questions. Generally, how I run my live streams is I jump right into it and I take a few breaks during the broadcast so I can answer questions. If you're watching the replay in the future and you want to skip all that chit chat and question answering, you, you'll you know where you can do that. When I say I'm going to take questions now, then of course you can skip ahead if you're not interested in the Q&A. All right, so we're going to go for it. So the first thing I want to do is talk about um, what I like to add to my watercolors. Then we'll go through and look at the 30 paintings we did for 30 Days to Better Watercolor. And I'll tell you the ones that I think need a little help and what I'm going to be adding to them. And we'll do the demos live here today. So one thing I love to add to my um, watercolors is color pencil. And you can use any brand you want, honestly. I prefer a wax-based pencil, and I prefer a pencil that's a little bit more opaque. Now, this is really up to your own personal preference. You may prefer a pencil that's more transparent. You might prefer a pastel pencil to a colored pencil. It's totally up to you. I tend to reach for my Prismacolor colored pencils when I am doing this, mostly because they're a little bit more opaque. So if I need to cover over a mistake, I can cover over it. Uh, oh, someone's asking a question. Is this live? I'm currently holidaying in Vietnam and so happy to see some coloring. Yes, Kathy, it, we are live and I hope you're having a wonderful vacation. Um, so color pencils are wonderful. If you prefer polychromos, those are more transparent, but they will also work really well. Honestly, you can use Crayola. It does not matter what brand you use. Um, certain pencils are going to be more light fast than others. So if you are going to add a lot of pencil to your work and you want to display it on a wall where it's going to have sunlight, I would highly recommend going for a brand like Polychromos, Derwent Lightfast, um, Caran d'Ache, Luminance, something like that. But um, my workhorses are my Prismacolors and I always have them handy to my table. But any wax-based pencil is my preference. Um, even the budget pencils work really well for this. So don't feel like you have to go break the bank. Another thing I like to have in the colored pencil realm are pastel pencils and pastel pencils are like colored pencils, but they have um, like chalk for the lead instead of wax. And uh, they're really opaque. They're really nice for adding highlights. Um, if you don't use too much on it, it's you're you're all set. If you're going to add a lot of this, you may need to add a fixative to it to lock it down. I'm probably not going to use too much pastel pencil because these are greeting cards and they will probably be handled. Um, so I'd like to stick to things that are going to be sealed down onto my paper a little bit better. Now, to that effect, you could use pastel sticks if you want to add mixed media to your watercolors, especially if you're going to matte and frame them under glass. Um, you could even use oil pastels, but I personally don't use oil pastels generally because um, they always kind of stay a little sticky. And if it's going to be in a sketchbook or it's going to be on a greeting card, then um, it could transfer onto somebody's hands and smudge in the envelope and all of that. So uh, that's another option that you can use. Another favorite is to use gouache. And here I have some of my dry gouache palettes. And gouache is perfect to use on top of your watercolor paints because 
gouache is essentially an opaque watercolor. They use the same pigments that you'd use in watercolor, except ground a little more coarsely, so they're opaque. And uh, they have gum arabic, so it's the same binder that your watercolor has. So as long as you're not using it too thickly, it will work perfectly on your watercolor and is very compatible and isn't going to give you any problems with the um, with adhesion. So that's something else that we also want to consider when we're layering up our products. We want to make sure that our media is not going to flake off or um, otherwise ruin what's underneath. So that's another reason I'm recommending the materials that I recommend. Um, another really fun thing to use if you love detail would be paint pens. And there are so many different paint pens. I would recommend an acrylic based paint pen because an oil based paint pen sometimes can leave a little bit of like a grease stain or it could even rot the paper eventually. I mean, I guess oil pastels could essentially do the same thing, although I've never had that happen, but I would stick to a water based paint pen. And there are all different kinds. Um, these ones by Artix have a brush tip and a bullet tip. These ones from a hoo hoo have a um, have a fine hard plastic tip, kind of like a Posca pen, and also a bullet tip. And then we also have the classic Posca markers. Let me grab one of those. Might as well show you what the Cadillac. Actually, you know what? I don't think I have any up here because I think my daughter Lila confiscated all my Posca pens. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's bad. I don't even have one up here. Well, anyway, they're they're just basically like uh, the hard plastic tip there, the ones that I have anyway. But Posca is also available in different nibs if you prefer a different size than you can find. But I find these budget acrylic paint pens to work really, really well. If you are looking at one of your artworks and you decide that it doesn't have the crispness or the detail that you want, something that's wonderful to use would be fine liners. And you can find fine liners in both black, brown, sepia. You can also find them in colors. And this is a great way to just like define an edge or add detail or add um, like that pen and ink and ink and wash effect to a finished painting if you want to. And these are waterproof. So if you decide you want to go back in over on top again with more wet media, it's not going to bleed or give you any problems. So these are probably my picks. You can also get any of these inks. You can get inks in brush pens like this so that you can um, you can add ink and wash that way or add shadows. You can also use these watercolor brush pens. These are Jane Davenport Mermaid markers, but I have some from Altenu and Ben Fang and Sennelier make some as well. Um, they're great if you just want to give a really uh, bright punch of color. These are transparent, just like your watercolors, but they're very intense. These are dye based though. Um, not the black ones. The black India ink pens are usually fade proof and waterproof, but the um, the ones that are the colored ink pens that you find in, in pens like this generally are not pigment based and they can fade. So, you know, keep that in mind if it's not a greeting card or a sketchbook work. Whenever you want to put something on the wall and it's going to, you know, be displayed in sunlight, you just want to keep make sure that you've got protection because any work on paper can be a little bit fragile and you want to make sure they're not going to fade on you. All right, so we've gone through very quickly a bunch of different supplies we can use. And now we're going to actually go through the cards and see what I think actually needs a little help and what I think is actually fine. Now, one of the benefits of not charging in with mixed media right away is that I think sometimes we jump the gun. I know I jump the gun all the time. I just, you know, I have a look in my head and then I'll do the watercolor and then before I even have a chance to determine whether it looks all right, I'll go in with mixed media. So the nice thing about doing the class 30 Days to Better Painting is that I wanted to keep it simple and we only used watercolor paint, no other media. So um, all of these are straight watercolor and I will be adding, I'm going to add some things to some of them today. Like this one, I feel like the, uh, this was a, uh, this was a, um, a controlled bloom technique. And I feel like I could brighten up the colors a little bit. So I do want to add maybe some pastel pencil or colored pencil to this. This frog, I really like how he turned out, but I do think dotting on some gel pen, oh, that's another thing I wanted to share. Gel pens are also really good for adding on top of watercolor. A gel pen is gonna stick really well to your paper. You can also get white paint pens. These are essentially acrylic paint pens. Um, I think stippling in with some white to add a glossiness, show like the pores on the skin, maybe a little highlight in the eye would be really effective. Same with this popsicle. I think it really needs that frosty effect. So some colored pencils to give it that frostiness. Maybe some white pen stippling on that to make it uh, pop a little bit. This right here was really, it got kind of uh, heavy and muddy. So I'm thinking some colored pencil, bring out the texture in these close tree barks. Maybe some gouache on the, um, on the foliage there to really make them pop. 
Definitely some white pen highlights on the strawberries to make them look juicy and luscious. This, um, I feel like I could add a little bit uh, of texture to the, uh, the stamen here and maybe just a little bit of fine lining, fine lining to the butterfly to just crisp it up a little bit. And then these, I think, are pretty much all right. This was our color mixing wreath, our first project in the class, where we learned how to take six colors and, and mix our, um, take a split primary and mix our tertiary colors. This one, when I was painting it, I was thinking, oh, I want to get some color pencils out. I want to do this. I want to do that. But now that I look at it, I actually think it looks pretty good the way it is. Now, all of these lessons that I'm showing you, all of these cards took between 10 minutes and 40 minutes to paint. So, um, and the ones that are longer generally were broken up into a couple parts. So if you got 10 minutes to paint, then you got to go throw a load of laundry in or pick the kids up from school. You know, you can break it up and fit it into your day because that's, that's the hardest thing I think about any sort of hobby is fitting it into your day. This one here, I also think is just fine the way it is. It was a 10 minute, this was a 10 minute project. And I kind of like the looseness. And I think if I added anything to it, it would just make it fussier. So I'm going to leave that one the way it is. And same with this one. I like how loose and fresh it is. And I think I'm going to leave that one alone. And same with this. I like how I left some white sparkle. But if you didn't, if you had done a similar project, but everything got really muddy or everything got completely solid, you might want to go in with a paint pen. See where I have those light, sparkly, whiter areas where I just didn't paint because the paper was dry when I painted this. Um, you could go in with a white paint pen and, and recapture that uh, that bright white. I've got this cat hair on that corner of that. Uh, it's funny because it, it was standing on its edge. So I know the cat came up and rubbed her face against the corner of that card. Um, this one I might add a little bit of color pencil to just to kind of make the skin tone look a little bit more milky and, uh, um, and soft because it did get a little, uh, it did get a little bit grungy there. So I might, I might add to that one. This one, I'm not sure. I kind of just like the way it is. This was our last lesson. It was one of the longer ones. Um, but I kind of like just seeing the white of the paper where I left it. And again, like the elephant, if there wasn't those little slivers of white, I might want to go in there. But I think I like the way that one is. And I, and I like these chunky shadows. I like molding and sculpting with a watercolor where you get these kind of just very quick dashes of color that that just make um, make shadows. This one here, uh, this was another fairly quick one. And I think I like the way it is. I thought for sure I'd want to go in here with a fine liner, but um, I'm thinking I'm going to leave that leave it alone because it's bright and I like it. This was another one that like if I wasn't trying to stick to, to just to watercolor, I would go in with a gel pen and do those highlights. But we actually did those highlights a different way in class. And honestly, I think it looks good the way it is. I don't feel like I need to add to that. I think I like the way this one is too. This was a super fast um, impression of shells and I love the spatter. I love how carefree it looks. And I think if I added to mixed media to this, I actually would end up making it feel more fussy. And uh, what I love most about this is how free and effortless it looks. And I wanna keep it that way. This one, I'm also feeling that um, that I don't want to do anything. I mean, I could add some gouache spatters in here, but I love how misty it looks because um, we did a technique where we spatter water on it, let it soak in and then lift it off. And it gives us all that really nice, crusty, salty, um, you know, misty, splashy texture. And I think I want to leave it because I just I love the impression that it has. And this is simple, but I don't think it really needs anything else. So I'm going to leave that one as is. The horse, I could add some, maybe some detail to the ropes, maybe some detail to the eye, but I'll put that in a maybe pile because I really think that one looks all right as is. This one, hmm, I'm going to put this one in the maybe pile because honestly, I think it's, I think it's fine the way it is, but maybe I would brighten up some of the yellows on that with some colored pencil. So I'm going to put that in the maybe pile. We'll see how much time we have left. This little clownfish, I think I might do, um, I think I might do a little bit of detail to the coral in front with a um, with a color pencil and maybe dot on some like stipple on with a white gel pen to give it that kind of glossy wet look. But I'm not even so sure I want to do that. So I'm just going to tuck it to the bottom of that pile and then and then we'll see. This one, um, I could add some white gel pen highlights, but I really don't think it needs it. So I'll put it in the maybe pile. I'll return to it later. This one could use a little bit of maybe color pencil. 
highlights in there. I don't know. I also think it looks fine the way it is because I feel like if you add too much to the loose florals, you kind of lose that freshness. So that's on the maybe pile. The pineapple here, I could add some colored pencil into the uh, the skin here to give it a little bit more of a crispy, rough texture. But I also kind of like the texture they have going. So it's going in the maybe pile. The macarons, again, I feel like I could add a little bit of highlight and shadow with colored pencil or pastel pencil. Um, I don't know if it really needs it, though. So uh, I'm going to put that one in the maybe pile, too. This one. Again, I kind of feel like I could do a little bit of highlighting on the chairs with a colored pencil, but I also like how beachy and carefree it looks without any mixed media. So that goes into the maybe pile as well. This one, I feel like maybe taking a little bit of colored pencil and adding some detail to the bricks there and onto the stones might be nice, but I also don't think it's totally essential. So I'm going to put that in the maybe pile. And this... Uh, this little naive kind of, kind of folk arty, um, arty town, I'm not sure. I kind of like how it just looks kind of like a graphic um, kind of naive type print. So I think I'll leave that one as is for now. So I'm going to look at the chat and see if anybody has any questions. And then we will start altering some of these. So if you are watching the replay and you want to skip past the questions, then you can go ahead and do that right now. But I'm going to backtrack and see who's left questions. And wow, we've got 106 people here with us today. That is so awesome. All right. Um, P. Shea asks, for the class, do I need to buy the greeting cards or can I just buy paper and cut to size? If yes, which paper? You can use whatever you want and whatever you have. Um, I'm recommending the, the uh, these are just cellulose greeting cards. They're not expensive. I'm using the Strathmore greeting cards, but if you want to use a sketchbook, a sketchbook will be fine. The Strathmore Visual Journal has a very similar paper to this. So um, those two, I would say absolutely, because they're so similar and I know what sort of effects you're going to get. But other similar papers, you can obviously use whatever you have. But like Canson Montville would be very similar to these. Um, Strathmore 400 series would be very similar. Um, the Strathmore Ready Cut, I think it's by, I think it's Strathmore. That's a cotton paper, but I think it would be very similar to this. Um, yeah, if you already have paper, just use what you have. See if the if you see if what you have works. And then if you're unhappy with that, then I would highly recommend the uh, Visual Journal or 140 pound cold press Visual Journal by Strathmore or the greeting cards. If you're in America, it's a they're they're very affordable. I don't know about other countries. But find something comparable. It's uh, just something with, that's a decent paper, basically. It's it, it's not very fancy. Um, oh, Sheila says there's so many different techniques taught in the class. So many beautiful styles. Thank you so much. Jim says it takes me longer to paint these. So it's a good thing I can stop and start the videos. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if I miss your question um, at any time, feel free to post it again. Uh, I'm going to do my best, but sometimes the chat can go pretty fast. Lisa B says, question, the reference cards from Sarah Clark, you use, the, uh, you use these in the class, are numbered. Do you give those card numbers so we can pull the cards for reference? Um, the card numbers, are you can see them in the videos. Um, I, didn't partic I didn't specifically write them down, but you can see them right there in the videos. Uh, very easy to find. But you do not need to have those cards to take the class at all. Uh, question, did you try Amazon Basics colored pencils? That's from Lean B. No, I've never used those, but I've heard they're decent. I've meant to pick up a pack when I see them on sale, and I know they have Prime Days coming up uh, October 10th and 11th, so maybe I'll grab a small set at that time. Um, I have a problem buying art supplies, <laughs> so I'm trying to curb it, but uh, not doing that well. Uh, Kathy Stoge says, oh, yeah, is this live? Yep, I already answered that one. Um... Okay, I'll see if any new ones have come in since we stopped. Mary Testa says, question, will there be traceables for the drawings? Do the classes build on each other? Um, Mary, if you're a beginner, I would say definitely start in order, at least the first like three or four classes in order. But then after that, you can jump around. Uh, we draw together in all of these lessons. There are two lessons where I, I, I do, we do draw together, but I also put a pattern for the hand there because I know a lot of people are really um, afraid to paint hands. And also the i'm going to try to find it for you the the lion i do traceables for these two because i thought those might be a little bit 
challenging, but everything else is either we're drawing it together or we're going right in with the paint. So um, it, you, you'll you be surprised. I have had so many people tell me, I can't believe I was able to draw that, especially with a Kingfisher. I have had at least four people say, I can't believe I drew this. I never thought I'd be able to draw this. So trust yourself. Trust yourself, man. You have no idea what you're capable of. Oh, Melissa says, everyone like the stream, please. Yes, please give it a thumbs up while you're here. I really would appreciate that. Um, Melissa asks question, how do you decide if you want to use pastel pencil or colored pencil? Pastel pencils are a little bit more matte and a little more opaque. So if you want that real uh, strong pop and that high contrast, go with pastel pencils. If you want a more subtle look, use regular pencil, regular colored pencils. Okay, I think we are caught up again. If you have questions, if something occurs to you while we're doing this, go ahead and, and uh, put them in the chat. And then when we take another break, uh, I will answer those. I really want to start with a frog because that's the one I've been the most uh, the most keen to work on. And I think this is going to be a real easy one. Uh, my favorite gel pen is the Uniball Signo Broad. It is a kind of a, th uh, a thicker, like heavier weight. So if you wanted a finer tip, I know that... Um, Oh, Jelly Roll makes a pack that has, I think, like a six and eight and a 10. And I would say this is probably like a 10 equivalent to, to a Jelly Roll. So if you do want a smaller one, Arteza also makes some smaller ones. And I think Uniball does make a smaller tip called like an Angelique or something like that. But I like the broad because um, I find that it does not clog and go bad as quickly as other gel pens do. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try to tip this at an angle. So hopefully you can see the pen making contact with the paper. Let me make sure it's, there we go. And I'm just gonna do little stipples. So you can like here, I'm just barely touching the paper and I'm getting these smaller, um, these smaller marks. I wanna have a highlight on the eye there. That's a little bit bigger. But the, the white gel pens are great for catching um, the edge of something, someplace where you haven't managed to reserve your white. It's really good for that. I haven't had any issues with um, my gel pens turning yellow on the paper. I think the big issue with gel pen archivability is just it bonding with what's ever, whatever is underneath it. So if you had something waxy, like you're trying to go over colored pencil with a gel pen, it could scratch off. It's probably going to scratch off. But if you're going over paper or watercolor paint or gouache, it, it shouldn't come off because it's going on a fairly absorbent surface and it should be able to bond right to that. So I'm just kind of clustering my little dots together a little bit where light would just kind of maybe be hitting an area. I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure if I like that up there, uh, down there, but I'm going to do some up here just to balance it out. I think things look better, like kind of clustered together. It looks a little more and more natural than if you have it like kind of spaced out like stars in the sky. I don't think that that looks quite as nice. And the raised area, any anything that's kind of higher, think of what is raised and what would be catching the light. Like you, like an eyelid often will catch the light a little bit. And I think that's all I want to do. I, I was able to draw more attention to the face and add a little bit of a sparkle. And honestly, I don't think it needs much more than that. Okay, we're going to go on to our next one. I think I want to do this one next, the jellyfish. And I forgot to sign that one. Um well, I can show you the difference between colored pencil and using a pastel pencil here. So um, colored pencil is probably going to be plenty opaque, especially a Prismacolor white. Um, I want to just kind of highlight these little soft little tendrils. So I'm going to use the edge, the, the side of my pencil. Uh, Neocolor one or two crayons would also be good for this. So if you had any of those artist crayons. Actually, 
I think this pencil is, is bright. It's plenty bright. I just kind of was able to brighten up that a bit. Now, let me grab a just a pastel pencil. The thing I don't like about the pastel pencils is that sharpening them is, uh, is a challenge and kind of a pain in the butt because you can't put them in your electric sharpener because they break, they'll, they'll, they'll um, clog up your sharpener and they dull your handheld sharpeners. I did get some from Derwent that are pretty good. That's there. They're coming out with some new ones as well, but they haven't made it out yet. Um, I usually just go, I'll take a, all of them when they're all getting dull and I'll go over to my husband's um, bench sander and I just use a bench sander to sharpen them. But that's kind of a pain if you're in the middle of a, of a project to do that. But you can see you get some nice bright contrast there with a pastel pencil. I think maybe I'll take some other colors. And I've used all sorts of different brands of pastel pencils. And again, I don't think it's a, it makes a big difference when you're just doing this in mixed media and you're not adding tons and tons of it. What brand you have, what brand you use. This is the old style Derwent. Probably from the early 2000s, maybe the 90s, I'm not sure. But they all work well together. So you can always just open stock, try a couple different brands. And when you find one you really like, I really like these Van Gogh ones, but I don't think you can get them in America anymore. Um, but I think you can in Europe. I, I really like the Van Gogh pastel pencils. I bought some Carbothellos, but I haven't really had a chance to use them. They're in my uh, to use and review pile, but it hasn't gotten that, that far. Sometimes you'll get uh, ones that feel kind of scratchy and hard, even from the same, like, um, the same brand. So now with this, I feel like I probably would have to still use a fixative on this, even though I'm not putting a ton down. If I want to mail this, I probably will use a fixative. Maybe a little bit of orange. It'd be cute in there. I try to just kind of whittle away the wood if I'm sharpening with a knife so I don't waste too much of it. Hope that doesn't sound too scratchy. It doesn't sound too scratchy to me, but sometimes a microphone picks up all sorts of uh, unpleasant art material sounds. I'm just trying to enhance what I was doing with the, uh, with the watercolor. Oh, this is a pretty color. Geranium Lake. Underwent. Because they're opaque, you can even go over that dark. Like I can go over the dark blue and and add to that. And it will show up. So it's just a little bit less subtle with the with the pastel pencil versus a colored pencil because it is so opaque. I think I'll leave that one as is because I definitely once I start pulling in mixed media, I have a tendency to go a little overboard. And um, yeah, I don't want to. Now, I'm not going to set this in a stack. I'll set this to the side so I remember to spray it. Now, the downside to spraying your pastel pencil is that if you're using a lot of white, it's gonna darken it. Any of your, of your pastel lighter colors will get darker. So I would probably say it would have been a better idea just to use colored pencil on this, but I did wanna show the pastel pencils because if this was going under a, um, you wouldn't have to fix it, put fixative on it to put a mat and glass because there's not enough on there that it's gonna fall off. And that's generally what you'd use a fixative for to keep the pastel dust from falling off. But I'd fix it so it doesn't smudge when I, like if I, if I see, I just ran my finger over that thing and you can see the red on my finger. Um, if something that's going to be handled like an, or, or smudge onto a facing page in the sketchbook, you'd want to fix it. Um, but in a frame, I wouldn't because it's going to alter the colors. So I guess I'd say if you're going to do cards, probably I'd stick to colored pencil. This one here, again, I want to do the same thing I did with the frog and use the gel pen. Here it is. Um, just a little bit of a highlight on the lip. Try to make it so my hand's not in the way. A 
I'm actually not sure if I really like that as much as I thought I would. You can, oh, you know what? We could use a, I bet a gold gel pen would look really cute on that. I've got a gold gel pen right here. And yeah, oh, hoo -hoo, gold gel pen. That, I bet, because that would look, because this, it's not super opaque, but it's got a nice sparkle to it. And, a, and things that you're going to, you're going to handle, or you're going to flip through in a sketchbook, that's a great place to use your metallics because they're, they'll really show. Whereas if you put it on a, um, under a mat, under a glass, you don't really don't see the metallics, but if you're going to pick it up and you're going to hold it and somebody's going to receive it, it's, it's fun to use those metallics in that situation. So I think that's a better, I think that's a better use. This is a 08 size pen tip. So it's got, uh, it's a little bit finer than the, than the uh, other one we were just using. And then maybe just take a little bit of, a little bit of colored pencil. If I want to do a little bit of detail on the coral, because really they're kind of like these fingery shapes. I'm doing this all from memory too. I've already put away all my cards. <laughs> I was going to keep them out too because I was thinking I would do a live stream to like um, introduce the class, but uh, it was just too hectic. I was too busy that I couldn't make it happen. And so like, I'm just going to, I got to pick up. I was so overwhelmed with the mess that I had in my studio. So I started picking up and then I put away all my cards. <laughs> but those, uh, that color cube is so, is such a, was such a wonderful invention Sarah Renee Clark was a coloring book um, designer and she has um, a YouTube channel and she has a Facebook group and just a lovely woman. She designed this, um, this box of cards. You can get it digitally too um, because it can be kind of expensive to ship depending on where you live. But she designed this box of cards and they have a color palette on them, kind of like what you'd see at a home improvement store. And then they have a reference photo and the reference photo, the color palette comes from the reference photo. And it's just kind of fun because if you've got an artist block and you don't know what to draw, I'll just like pull a card out and just draw whatever it is or use the palette to inspire me to do something. So I just thought it was such a clever invention. So I've used it for both of the 30 days to better classes, the better painting, which is oils, acrylics or gouache and the, um, the watercolor one, just cause it's, it's so nice. I'm not sure if I really like this <laughs> now that I've done it. Yeah, this was this, this would have been fine just to leave the way it was, but still, it's pretty cute, I think. I should show befores and afters. I took photos of everything, so yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna quit while I'm not too far behind, I guess. I think it's cute. It's got a little bit of a sparkle to it, and I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it where it is. Leave it be. Put those back so I don't confuse my pencils. All right, we'll do one more and then I will take some questions. Let's move to this one and um, let's do some fine lining. Maybe I'll do a combination of colored fine lining and black fine lining. So I'm going to start off with this pink fine liner. And this is a waterproof, not all of, of your uh, Fine. And it, honestly, if you're going on top and you're not going to add more watercolor or more wet media on top, you can use any sort of fine felt tip markers you have. They don't have to be waterproof. But if you think you want to go back and add um, add some watercolor or gouache, then try to find waterproof ones. These aren't alcohol based. So they're actually these will work fine under alcohol markers as well. So it's nice to have products that will work with multiple media. This is kind of like, um, almost like how a pit pen is. I think it's probably India ink based. I like getting, I can get some nice fine details there. Let me add a little bit of orange in the, in the stamens. I can go in and add uh, links to the products that I used after the live stream. But if you had, you probably have stuff. If you've been doing arts, you know, you probably have some colored pencils. You probably have some gouache. You probably have some pens. The best thing to use is what you have. But I will, I will go and link the the things that I recommend. 
afterwards if you are looking for specific products. I'm just doing kind of like wiggly lines here just to bring a little bit of that texture in. And just add a little definition. You know, we could also do um, some paint pens there. Let me grab... I've got a, I got a whole box of them. I took the box that uh, the dog food packets came in. If you get them at Walmart, you can get this really big 48 packet thing. My dog likes this brand, the pedigree wet packets. I put it on top of her dry food. And um, they had, it comes in such a sturdy box that it's great for, for storing pens. And that way, if you didn't reserve enough to put like some um pollen on the front you can go in and get that here with that with that pen oh i could also use this maybe in some brighten up some spots on the wings all right now i think i'll just use some fine liner Generally in watercolor paper, you want to go a little bit bigger than you would with a fine liner on smooth paper or marker paper because you, I find with the fine liners, if I use them at an angle, they last a lot longer. If I go in with a tiny, tiny fine liner, like a 005 or a 0.1 or a 0.2, it just almost is like sandpaper on those nibs. They're just not, um, they're just not durable enough for the, the texture on the watercolor paper. So I generally use, will use an 05 or an 08 and work on the angle so that um so that i don't end up damaging my pen and make sure that your paper is completely dry before you do this because if your paper's wet you will ruin your pen i don't know why that happens but uh but it does same thing with the gel pen actually i'm just going to go around and outline this actually might be a little thick for For this if your ink if you're not getting enough of enough ink go slower you could build some patterns with the uh the pen as well kind of like zentangle if you wanted to i would go in and practice in this this darker area first until I kind of got a, a feel for the pen and a feel for the line, the patterns that I wanted to do. Because it's not going to be very dramatic. And then once you got the hang of it, then go into the lighter areas. And if it seems like your line's too thick and you want to go to a you want to go down a size, that's fine. But try the larger size first just to make sure you're not going to. You're not going to damage anything. These are disposable pens. They're not terribly expensive, but still, um, it's still money. You know, you're still paying for it. So you might as well treat your supplies right so you get a full, you get their full life. And you can find waterproof pens, pigment-based pens at any of your Big box stores. Micron's a really trusted name. They they make a good pen, but there's a lot of a lot of companies now have their own line of pens to go with like their markers and whatnot, and they they're very similar. I have to say, I feel like I could use a little bit more detail. Um, I think I'm gonna go. I could use a paint pen. I was thinking I would just use. I think I'll just use a gel pen because I don't want to get too. I don't want it to get too fussy. Just do some little dots. Like I said, I'm not looking at the reference photo at this point. I'm just kind of using my imagination. After this one, I'll take some questions. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. I'm using the word question in all caps so I can see it. And maybe just a little bit of highlight, stippled highlight here onto the a hibiscus or whatever flower that is. I'm assuming it's a hibiscus, but I don't know for sure.
Hmm. I think, I think that's good. I don't think I want to do more to that. All right, I'm going to take a look for questions. I'll throw these finished ones on the screen just so you have something to look at while I'm answering questions. Try to put them right side up. There we go. All right. Uh, Jeanette Robbins says, how do I rejuvenate a gel pen? I have not had the best luck with gel pens. I feel like once you start a gel pen, it's like you've got a you've got a ticking timer on it and you're you're only going to get so much out of them. I like with white gel pens, I said open one at a time once that's used up or stops working, then open another one if you buy like a multi pack. But you can try uh, scribbling it on your hand. You can try heating it up with a lighter, um, heating the tip of it with a lighter or under a candle. Um, but I really haven't had great, I haven't had any really good results fixing a gel pen. Uh, Kay Clark says, do you ever use hot press paper? Yes, I do. I like hot press paper. Um, generally, it, if I'm going to do a lot of pen and ink, like if I'm going to do something really detailed in the, the fine liner pens like these and then add watercolor to it, I'll use, or I'm going to use watercolor markers, I'll use hot press. Generally, I prefer kind of the middle of the road cold press paper. But um, yeah. Yeah, hot press is just a smoother paper, if you're wondering. Uh, Maggie Denton asks, are you excited for Inktober? I am. Also, how do you clean your paint puck? Mine is disgusting, LOL. Uh, yes, Maggie. Oh, my gosh. I am so excited. I've even I've done day one already because I'm busy on Sunday. So I got it done ahead of time. I'm going to do a video on it. Actually, oh, you guys can get a sneak peek because you're all here live. We'll get to see. I want to show you what my day one is. This is the only one I've done so far, but for the prompt dream, I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Um, but, and there's also going to be a tutorial on that on Sunday. But um, yeah, I'm excited. I usually don't work ahead unless I know I'm not going to be uh, available that day to do one, but so excited. So to clean my paint puck, mine's looking pretty good right now. I take it apart or I take the individual puck out of the um, thing. I use hot soapy water and I use an old toothbrush and I just scrub the heck out of it because it does get really slimy and gross. Okay. Uh, oh, thank you. Clark Fine Art says, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Brenda. Okay. Wow. Great. Um, let's see. I'm just looking back for any questions and then we'll do some more. Uh, Brenda Walsh says, Lindsay, do you ever do in-person meet and greet? I'm only a few hours away in Rhode Island. Uh, gosh, sometimes if I go to the stamp show in um, Massachusetts, like I just tell people I'm going to the stamp show and then uh, that's pretty much been, that's been pretty much it. I guess I, I guess I really haven't. <laughs> a few, Rhode Island, boy, that's more than a few hours. Well, I guess it is probably a few hours away, like five or seven or something. That's, that's a hike. Uh, I'll probably end up doing in-person classes again eventually once um, the kids are all graduated college and I have um, more space back. All right. Brenda asks, question, maybe use acetate and make it a framed card. Would that work instead of fixative? Well, Brenda, you, you she I think she's referring to putting acetate over the pastel pencils. The thing about plastic products like acetate and pastel is that there's a static charge on plastic and it attracts dust. That's why if you add pastel to artwork or you do a pastel painting, you never want to frame it under plexiglass or acrylic or styrene or any uh, plastic type glazing because it will like pull the the um it'll pull the particles of pastel off the paint off the paper and onto the the glazing because it's it's static electricity charged so i probably wouldn't do that i probably just spray it with fixative and um and do that because i think it would just kind of get smudgy looking pretty quick oh and joe actually answered that exactly <laughs> exactly the same thanks joe you're on the ball terry schmidt said what fixative do you recommend i use krylon workable fixative it's cheap it's basic you can get it everywhere Uh, if you use uh, Richard, oh, Redbird825 asks, if you use pastel or regular colored pencils, do you need to use a fixative over top only on pastels and only if it's not going to be under glass? Okay, I think. 
Oh, Brenda Walsh asks question. Do you think I should take the other teachable watercolor class to learn more water and brush control? It's up to you, Brenda. I have essential uh, tools and techniques for watercolor painting. That's a, the basic, basic beginners class. But um, we go over a lot of uh, a lot of basics in this class, too, because a lot of people I think take in this class and want to paint more every day and they want to get in that daily habit. And and I'm assuming that people might be a little bit rusty. And so I'm not going to assume that, that you know a basic technique. I'm going to explain it as or I, or I explain it as I go. So um, it will minimize the amount of questions that students will have. And um, that way it also just refreshes and reinforces techniques in people's minds. So um, you don't have to, if you want to, absolutely you can, but you don't have to, I think you can jump in and, and start painting. And that's what the, what this course is about. It's like getting, just, just sitting down and go. That's why we don't have too many supplies. We don't have a big expense. It's, it's sit down. You can put all your supplies in a basket, have it on your desk or on your kitchen table. And when you have that 30 minutes of time, you sit down and go. All right, I'm just gonna see if any brand new questions came in the last minute while I was answering those. And uh, Heidi Cook says, how do you find where the stamp shows are located? Um, I, let's see, I go to the one at the Big E in, uh, well, I haven't been in a couple of years, but the, um, the one in, the closest one to me is five hours away in Springfield, Massachusetts. And it's every June, it's the heirloom. It used to be called heirloom. Now it's like the Northwoods rubber stamp show or something like that. Um, and that's where I go. But Rubber Stamp Madness has a list on their website and in their magazine. That's probably the best place to go to check. Um, thank you, Barbara Brady, for the super chat. I do appreciate that. It's very kind of you. Uh, LA for Dreams asks, can we use Dr. PH Martin Bleed Proof White for highlights? Just got some. That's perfect. That's a great highlight. thing that's also really great about that is that if you have a dye-based watercolor, or you're going over like one of these pens it's not gonna let the paint, the color leach up. Like a gel pen sometimes will let the color leach up through if it's a dye based color, but the bleed proof doesn't. That's what the bleed proof means. That's an excellent product. I didn't, I don't know why I didn't think to grab that. Um, all right, if I missed your question, do not hesitate to post it again, uh, post it again and I'll answer it in the next batch, but we're gonna carry on and we're gonna go to the strawberries lesson. Gotta make sure I put that pastel one on top. I don't wanna smear it. <laughs> All right, so here I am. I think just some simple white pen is all I need. These uh, white paint pens from Mr. Pen, they come in a pack of six, five or six. They're great. They're cheap. I think it's like they're about a buck a pen, maybe maybe $1.25 a pen. And um, they, unlike gel pens, I've never had a problem with a regular paint pen clogging. So I just want to brighten up that edge there. Maybe just add a little shot, a little highlight there. I can get a little extra with my highlights sometimes. There, sparkle up the bowl a little bit. But I also like the little white bits that I have from the, the painting. So sometimes you don't want to go in and add more because you kind of lose some of that freshness from your watercolor painting. And now I'm going to take this gel pen. Just It's just my, my Uniball Signo. And I, it's really easy to overdo it on strawberries. I'm just gonna try it. Basically your highlights end up being around where your seeds would be on the most round area facing the light. So my shadow's casting over here. So I know my light's kind of coming in at an angle there. So when I put these highlights on, I'm going to just be aware of that and trying to envision where the seeds are which I could go in and I could put seeds in with color pencil or a or something or a paint pen like a yellow paint pen if I wanted to but again you have to kind of ask yourself how much do I need to show because the viewer's brain is going to make up a lot of the difference especially in a watercolor painting that's why sometimes you look at a painting and you're like well there's not I love this painting it's beautiful but when I look at it it's really not detailed. It's really not, you know, it didn't take a lot of time. There's just something I really love about it. And it's because that painting, your brain is filling in the rest and it's nice and fresh. And, um, and that's why it works so well. So don't, don't make your viewer lazy. Your viewer's brain should have something to do. Right. Around. 
and try not to overdo it because it, it's really easy. You could even have just a little bit around some of these to have some contrast. And some of the little seeds because the highlights will show up the best on the darker, the darker areas, but you don't need to overdo it. I think I'll take a green color pencil, something light and see if I can brighten up the, um, this little hull here. It just kind of got lost in the shadow. This is a Holbein. A lot of people rave about the Holbein pencils. Um, they're okay. They're not, they, they definitely do not make my top 10 though. I have a few. Mm, maybe even a darker green that I can get a little bit of detail. Actually, there's some, there's some budget pencils that work really well for this because like I have that, um, that brute fooder set, that crazy set of 520 pencils. If you ever watch my sat chat, they're in the background. Um, those are really good for this technique, especially when you're just trying to like fix an edge because you got a, like a wonky looking edge or you get a rough edge because of the paper or whatever. It just didn't dry the way you wanted it to. Because with that 520 set, you can find a matching color and you can just sharpen it and just root, put that edge in there and nobody even knows that it's not um, it's not watercolor because the pencils are not very waxy. So it, it, come, it seamlessly blends in. So honestly, if you have those pencils and you like, you're like you kicking yourself, you're like, why did I buy these? This is too many. Put them out as a decoration because they're beautiful and use them when you need to sharpen up a... Um, we need to sharpen up something like that. You know what though? I think I will show you those water, those, uh, ink filled pens. I got a couple here and I got to swatch them because I'm not sure which one has the color, has the color I want. I've got some scrap paper. Oh, and guys, um, I, if you watch that shot, I mentioned the, the sketchbook snowball, how I had all these sketchbooks. I wasn't sure how many I had and how, and I wanted to get a bunch finished up. So I, I filmed that video and I found a bunch of sketchbooks and I'm like, I do not want to ever work in these again. I'm so sick of these sketchbooks. And so I took that stack of those sketchbooks and I brought them in here and I'm like, those are my scrap paper. And uh, so they don't have to go to waste. This one has gotten dried out on me. So I'm going to wet it. See if I can perk it back to life here. I have two of these, so I'm not sure which, uh, which one has the color. One, I think one has cool ink and one has like a warm colored ink, but I guess they both look kind of warm. Actually, you can take any water brush and fill it with like a India ink. I feel like I need a little bit more shadow. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some in here with this. I would have gone for a cool ink. I thought I had a cool ink in here. Oh, I see another pen over there. It's probably where the cool ink is. And by cool, warm, and this is something we talk a lot about in 30 days, is the undertones of our paint and looking for and mixing colors and looking for the cool and the warm. I gotta see maybe this one. This one might actually be. See how this looks kind of brown? I don't know if it will show on on camera. See how that almost looks kind of sepia? It's it's a black ink, but it still looks kind of sepia. Let's see how this one looks. Yeah, see how this one. Ooh, I might need to. Sometimes the ink dries in the brushes, the bristles. See how this one has a little bit more of a purpley or blue undertone? It's a cooler, so that's a cool black and that's a warm black or gray, I should say, really. I think the cool will work a little bit better since I did a, I had a gray that was a mix of burnt umber and, yeah, this is clogged though. I don't want to squeeze it and have a terrible mistake. But there, I think that gives it a little bit more oomph and, you know, you can do more actually. I'm thinking that maybe a paint pen would work good. Let's let's try this guy. Let's see what this guy looks like. Yeah. The Artix brush tip acrylic markers are quite nice for this sort of thing. They're they're opaque, but they're not like as opaque as like just using acrylic paint. They have a I don't know, they just kind of seem to blend really well with stuff. And some of them, like this, this one, these are permanent, but some actually resolu are resoluble with water, which is kind of, which is kind of interesting. This is a Mikador one. I'm not sure if this is going to be ready to roll or not. 
Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I had a lot of I had a lot of sketchbook. I had more sketchbooks. I had twice the amount of sketchbooks that I thought I had in progress. But that video is coming up Friday on my YouTube channel. It's long. Good one to fall asleep to, probably. I don't know how exciting it would be, but anyway, I filmed it. All right, I'm gonna call this one done, I think. And let's oh, you know what? I'm gonna do the popsicle one. Let's do the popsicle one. Now I gotta set this one aside because I gotta make sure everything's dry before I set anything else on top of that. Now, this one I feel like need this one. Honestly, ever after every single one of the projects I did, I was thinking, oh, I want to add something. I could, I should really want to add something to it. I had the itch, but letting the the painting sit for a while before I decided um, was the best thing because then I didn't end up overdoing it. You know, I didn't end up charging in when I didn't really need to and uh, messing with it. So first thing I want to do is just take some white on the edge and see if I can get that frosty effect. And it's gonna, the edge of the pencil is gonna catch the paper, the texture of the paper and give us that icy look. And that helped, that helped quite a bit. I think just adding that little bit of white and when my pencils get really short, um, they're like just little, little stubs. Then I stick them in my travel, my travel, um, my travel bag and if I get like a couple really short stubs I'll glue them end to end so I have a, like a double-ended pencil that I'll keep in my bag for that sort of thing especially like black and white or brown and white those are very uh often used colors for me anyway so now I can have fun with any of these popsicle colors Now on the drips, the drips are glossy. The popsicle is frosty and matte looking, but the, the drips are going to be glossy and shiny. So if I add color to the drips, I got to burnish it, meaning I've got to like press my pencil down and make sure that I'm getting smooth, solid bits of color so that it, so it matches the texture of the thing that I'm trying to create. And that's something that, that I think we do a lot when we add mixed media or a reason why we add mixed media to our watercolors is because we're trying to recreate a texture that we missed or that didn't quite work out so well with watercolor. There, let's get a nice pink. This one's pretty or this one, one of these two, let's see. I like this one a little bit better. I'm going to sharpen this. So if you have headphones in, please um, cover your, take your headphones out for a second. I use an electric pencil sharpener for all my colored pencils, but especially for Prismacolors because they are so fickle. They love to break. So electric sharpener. The one I use is a jar link. I'm going to show it to you because if you, if you go to, if you go to Amazon and you look for jar link, and then look at the top, it'll say six to eight millimeter. And you want that one because that will take Derwent brand as well. It won't take your square color pencils, but it will take the chunkier Derwents and all of your standard pencils. But I get asked all the time what pencil sharpener I use. And honestly, I think any electric one is going to be good as long as it fits your pencils. But um, I've been using that one daily for over a year and I haven't had any issues. And I think it's like 15 bucks. And it still sharpens fast. I had one that I, I still have it actually. It's Office Max, I think, or Office Depot. And it works great. And it will even sharpen my, my square ones. But it takes an age to sharpen anything, I think, just because it's kind of old. But I do not like to sharpen by hand. I break. I, I, I don't think my hand's steady enough or something. I don't know. I always tend to break them. I think I, I rock the pencil a little too much. I'm also not great with scissors, cutting things out with scissors. I use my scan and cut. It looks like a five-year-old cut it out. I missed the basic fine motor control class in kindergarten. All right, I get to get some of that pink in there. And that's just giving us that frosty texture. We'll do a little stippling with a white pen as well. 
Uh, let's get a little yellow. And I will take a break after this one for questions, too. So replay watchers, you can get your <laughs> you can get your fast forward finger ready. <laughs> and live stream watchers can get their questions ready and post them in the chat right now. Yellow is nice. Yellow is so translucent that you can go over and kind of overlap the pink and get your oranges in there. And this also brings up a beautiful luster because the just the nature of colored pencils, that beautiful translucency and uh, texture of the actual medium just is so pretty. It, it works so well. Uh, maybe a little bit of pastel green or something. I mean, it's so easy to get to go overboard too because it's fun. It's fun to do these techniques. And if you're liking the way it's coming out, no reason why you shouldn't. Maybe a little bit of uh, beige or tan for the for the popsicle stick. I feel like Prismacolor could do a little bit better with its with its neutrals. I should just grab my Derwent drawing pencils. Those are all neutrals. Those are gorgeous. Oh, by the way, um, I am doing a class on Friday the 13th on Michael's. We're going to be doing garlic in Derwent drawing pencils. And if you go to michaels.com slash classes, you can sign up for free. It's a free class. And if you'd like to leave a review for my class you can even though it's like it's weird they let you leave a review for classes before they happen it's like how do you know they're good or not but i guess you review the teacher so anyway if you want to leave a review you can i had a negative review before class even started before class even was even there but the person was reviewing they were upset because of the price that michael's charged for the supplies <laughs> i'm like well i have nothing to do with that <laughs> that's not i have nothing to do with that I'm saying use what you have. I want that a little glossier in here, so I don't want to go on the side of the pencil. All right, yeah, you get the idea. So now I'm going to take my gel pen and I'm going to add some pretty strong highlights. Now, I would recommend something like this. When you have like a drip on a table, you've got like this rolled, like the water, the, the juice is kind of like beaded up. And so your highlight's going to be at that bend of the bead. So we're at the edge of where the water kind of curves over. So it's not going to be right up to the edge. It's going to be more like just in from the edge a little bit. And you can, I like to kind of, go around and leave gaps and then I can always go back in and fill them in later if I want to but that way it doesn't look outlined or fake it's really easy to overdo a highlight so just kind of skip around put it here and there try to make your lines nice and smooth and that will give you the best effect Liquid stuff will catch and throw the light around. So you will see highlights on both sides at those rounded edges. And still life often has several light sources. I just want, I'm just kind of scribbling in a little highlight on the stem, not the stem, the uh, stick and then smudging it with my finger so it's not super bright. And then I'm going to do stippling because I don't want this to look shiny. I want it to look frosty. But I want like those ice crystals, especially on the raised parts, because I think with a popsicle, the um, if it's going to melt, like the melty parts are going to be more on the inside on like the little channels there the little indents and then the the frosty part is going to be more up high so i'm just putting in those dots now sometimes when you go over colored pencil you will get that remember i was talking about the bleed proof white and how the bleed proof white doesn't leach sometimes you will get some leaching up through some of the pastels the, the colored pencils 
um, especially on like purples. Usually not so much with Prismacolor, but it can happen with any of them. The budget pencils are a little bit known for being culprits of that. But they all can do it, so, you know. I like the stippling. I think that's really making it look frosty. This would be a fun little birthday card to send, I think. I'll do a little bit on the edge there, maybe. All right, I think I'm going to call that one done. And I will see if there's any other questions. Let's see, what have we completed since the last one? I think we just did. We've just done two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, questions, and then we're going to come back and do the other card that I definitely wanted to get done and maybe look at the other ones and see what else might I might want to alter because we've been streaming for an hour already. Oh, there's like little hearts coming up from the side of my computer screen. I don't know if somebody's doing that or I think it's one of you guys must be doing that. That's cool. Um, thanks for the hearts. Whoever's making little hearts float on my screen. <laughs> uh, oh, hi. So thanks for stopping by, Dawn. Dawn stopped by to say hi. She can't. She has to. Um, She's at work. I appreciate that. Uh, question. Is that the sharpener that is in your Amazon store? It's easy to click on your link. Yeah, it should be. That one should be the one in my store. Um, there's been a few that I've used that have been that have been great. I like this one the most just because it will also take the Derwent pencils. I have another one on my upstairs desk that I think I've been using longer than this one. And it's again, it's great, but it won't take the Derwent. It's not big enough. Uh, Brenda asks, should you sharpen colored pencils even if they come sharpened? I think most people would recommend that you do. Um, sometimes like the wax can leach out to the outside of the pencil and almost make a film. So when you start coloring with them, they might feel not the best. Um, and you might think you've got a dud pencil set and it's, and it's garbage. And, but if you sharpen it, then they work great. And plus they usually don't come with a nice point. Let me see if I can find a pencil that's not been sharpened before i think oh, this one maybe hasn't been sharpened before these well i think i've used it but these they usually come with like a blunt uh a blunt tip so you may get frustrated because you can't get the detail you want but it's a good idea just to take off any of that wax bloom and make sure you get a really good um really good experience first time you use them so you're not kind of soured against a pencil for no good reason Uh, Mary Testa says, asks, is there a watercolor medium that just add that adds gloss, not shimmer? Just curious. Gum Arabic will add gloss without adding shimmer. Um, do do you, um, I wonder why you might want that. Generally, like sometimes with watercolors, if you apply them too thickly, they'll be kind of glossy because they have a little bit too much gum Arabic in it. Um, I think there is also maybe a gloss medium by Windsor and Newton. Um, if you just want to spot gloss some areas, like say you're doing, say you have this popsicle and you want to make that glossy, I would just go ahead and use, um, some acrylic varnish or some, like, uh, I probably wouldn't use Mod Podge because Mod Podge can get sticky, but if you have like a, um, if you have like a, a gloss varnish, an acrylic, uh, water-based gloss varnish, that would work. Um, Mod Podge, I, I would use like, I, I just wouldn't use Mod Podge. It just gets so sticky if you're in a humid environment. Um, gloss medium should work. Anything that's uh, anything that's water based like that and just spot put it where you want, because I don't know if you'd want to make all your paint glossy because it's uh, that's usually something that I try to avoid. And it's kind of a downside when I um, when I use it. Or when I have paint that does that when I apply it thickly. I'm just seeing if I missed any other questions. Um, Tracy Viz asks, which sketchbooks did you not like and why? Honey, okay, I had 53 sketchbooks in part. So, I, I, you know, <laughs> I can't even go into it here. It was so, it was so much. Um, I went through what ones I liked and what ones I didn't and why in that video. It's coming out on Friday. It's like an hour and a half of your life. You'll never get back, but you will know so much about sketchbooks by the time you're done. Um, so I'm not going to get into it here just because it's just, it's too much. 
my, I feel like my also my brain's a little fried. I don't know if I can even just recall it all instantly. Um, but I did on that video, I do recommend my favorites um, that are really consistent and easy to find and not too expensive. So uh, there's so many. That, and some of the ones I, that I didn't like that I put for scrap, um, it's just because I don't tend to draw on regular drawing paper. I tend to prefer thicker mixed media paper because then I can add other stuff to it. And so the ones that I put in the pile to use a scrap is going to be stuff that's acid free. But I, if I do like a gel print on it or I use it for under paper and it ends up looking great and I want to collage with it, I don't have to worry about it being some dodgy paper that might fall apart. Like it might turn yellow or anything. So I saw bad paper. My ones in the scrap pile are not bad paper. It's just stuff I didn't really like. Maybe I didn't like the size of the book or I didn't like that it was spiral bound or something about it that just put me off, you know. All right. I think I caught up. I think I caught up. Let me see. Did we get any brand new ones since I've started jibber jabbering here? Uh, oh, Janet says question birthday card that says you're the coolest. That is I get. Yeah, that'd be perfect for that. Good. Good call, Janet. OK, everybody that's painted this popsicle. Now you know what to do with that card. Thanks to Janet. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Let's at least do this one because this one was and this I did twice. And the first time the first one I filmed, I chucked it. I'm like, I'm not using that. And I'm like, well, maybe I'll give it. Then like I came and looked at it the next day. I deleted the file. I was so disgusted with myself. I deleted the video and then I came back and looked at it. I'm like, oh, you know, that's not too bad. I'm going to take another crack at it. And I did it again. And it's OK, but I just was not. It's OK. It's okay, but this is not my favorite. This is probably my least favorite one out of the whole course. So let's see if we can bring this guy to some state of um, of happiness. So let's use some gouache. Actually, Clark Fine Art in the chat, she shared her Daniel Smith gouache with me, and I put them in this palette. We met up in um, in Dover Foxcroft and did some painting, and uh, it was lovely. And she shared some gouache with me because I bought the little mixing set plus brown. And I was like, hmm, I like these. These are pretty good. And she's like, I bought all the colors. So you want some? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll try them out. I'll use them in my review. So that was very kind of her. Okay, let's see. I'm going to use some gouache. And I'm going to start with, I think I'll use a filbert. I like to use filberts and flats for gouache. I find they just don't hold as much water. So they're easier to control. I'm going to take some of this. Uh, warm yellow. Our leaves are starting to change here in the beautiful state of Maine. A little too early for my liking. Makes me very sad. The summer is over. Dab some in there. I'm liking it better already. So with gouache, when you use gouache from a pan like this, I did spray it before we began today, just so it would have a chance to um, to soften up a little bit. Oftentimes, especially with your lighter colors, they're gonna they might almost look uh, kind of watery and translucent when they're wet, um, but then when they dry, they do get more opaque. So don't be discouraged if you're starting to do this on a painting and it's like, oh, it's just not coming out as as um as thickly as a one. Oh, and can you see yeah you can see my palette i'm just getting some i'm really kind of working that into a paste and so the brushes that i'm using here are not my watercolor brushes i wouldn't use watercolor brushes on dry gouache because you do kind of get in there and you dig a bit so what i use is just mixed media brushes generally i use the zen all media this is what they look like they've got the the silver handle and they got golden taclon hairs but any golden taclon brush is going to work great for this you can get them cheap you can get a cheap, um, Royal Landnickel has a bunch of really inexpensive sets you can get at any of your big box stores, even like Walmart, I think. It doesn't have to be a craft store. Princeton has their their value line that would also be really good for this. You just want um, uh, flats and filberts, filberts work the best, but just a variety of brushes. And if you already have brushes for acrylic, go ahead and use those. You're not going to hurt your acrylic brushes unless you're really like, you know, being rough with them in the. Um, in the gouache, but I use my Zenol medias for acrylic and gouache. I don't do much acrylic, so it doesn't make sense to have a bunch of just brushes for acrylic when the gouache isn't gonna hurt them. 
Okay, I feel like that's a little bit better. I'm going to do some bright green as well. Almost seems a little too bright. Maybe mix it in with some of this M. Graham. I'm going to do a little colored pencil on the bark because I want to bring a little texture into those closer to us trees. I probably should have done that before I put on the gouache so I don't end up getting into it and smearing it. I need a lighter color though for contrast. I'm going to have to go to my budget pencils. I'm going to have to go into the old Brute Fooder 150s to find, to find a nice light brown, I think. Oh my word. I've got my progressives on and switching sometimes between looking at different things is a challenge. I've been trying to wear false eyelashes and I still have not been able to do it. I, I think it's because like I can't, I've got my glasses off and I'm trying to see my face <laughs> that close to a mirror. I'm like, I can't, I don't know people do this. You have to like develop the technique. I think when your eyesight is still really good up close because once you hit a certain age, I, the window closes on false eyelashes. I think I keep getting marketed these really cute um, eye sh eyelashes. I, I don't know why I keep getting ads for these, but I keep getting ads for the cutest eyelashes and that you're supposed to be able to wear for like two weeks. If anybody's ever used them, please let me know. Um, and they look so easy to apply. Of course, it's like an 18 year old on, on Instagram showing you how to put them on <laughs> or on Facebook actually. It's like, I can't see my eyeballs that close up. If I'm that close, I'm not, I can't, I can't, I can't do liquid, eye, liquid eyeliner. I'm an artist. I make a living with my hands, like in being able to do precise drawing, but to draw a line across my own eyelid with liquid eyeliner, I look like, I don't know what, I look like something I can't say on YouTube where I'm going to get demonetized. <laughs> All right. I think we got some texture there. Oh, thank you, Sharon. Sharon says this mixed media class has opened up a whole new, a whole new world. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. All right, I feel like that brings us up, a, brings that up a little closer. Also, I think a little bit of teal would be pretty. Uh, you know how we get that moss, get that beautiful moss on the trees, and plus the teal is really going to make the oranges pop. So let's get some of that lichen. I guess it's not moss. It's lichen. It's not lichen on the trees, and that can really bring them forward. Even though it's a cool color, it's lighter in value. That lighter in value and the contrast and the colors is helping it pop. All right. Um, and I'm wondering, I'd like to bring some of these grasses out, and I'm um, wondering if I'll do better off with a pen or a pencil or with gouache. I think I want to do the gouache, and I'm going to try using a liner, or at least a little, I'll use a little spotter because that's not... That shouldn't hold too much water. Now, when I'm going to use a small brush like this, and I'm going to use gouache. I'm not going to mix with this brush because this brush is too delicate and I'll end up splaying the bristles if I do that. So I want to make some nice, bright, kind of like sap green, grass green blades. So I think I'm going to mix my own color because none of the colors I have here are really what I want. If I had a phthalo, a, a true phthalo green, and I could add that with some orange or some warm yellow, and that would work really well. But I don't. So I'm going to do the Stalo. Actually, this is a cyan blue from Holbein. Holbein has had unbelievable prices on their five color mixing set on Amazon. It's It was crazy. I think, I think I don't know what it is right now, but it had dropped down to $16. I couldn't believe it. I'm going to add some of this. Uh, I think it's permanent green medium maybe from M. Graham. Now I'm going to add some of this orange yellow. Ooh, yeah, there we go. I need to make a pan of that. Look how good. Now, okay, so I made this with a couple colors on my palette. You can't tell me Dan Swift can't come up with a green like that in their original original offering of 
uh, of colors. That is, it was a strange, it was a strange offering of colors they came up with. All right. Anyway, people think I have an ax to grind with Daniel Smith. I do not. I like their mixing set quite a bit. Not as much as Holbein though. And it's much more expensive. So let's see how this will show up. Oh, I think that's going to work out just fine. I'm going to hold, I'll try holding this up so you can see how my brush hits the paper. Um, basically, this is very awkward because I've got all my palettes in, in, uh, in, in the way. I want a 90 degree angle between my liner brush and the paper. And I'm just going to kind of drag up those little wisps. I probably should re-put tape down if I'm doing that right from the bottom. But I'm going to see if I can. If I can manage it. I mean, it's not like I'm trying to put on eyeliner or anything. Maybe that's what I need to do. I need to get a paintbrush. I had a paintbrush in my hand, not a little. No, oh, I went to the I went to the white. That's all right. It's white. That's what white paint pens are for. To clean up the white, the white frames, the white messes, the messes on the edge of our paintings. And this is, I mean, this is a liner, but it's a short liner. It's not as, um, not as, a lot of times our liners are about twice as long. So you do have good control with this one. This one is Arteza number one round, but it's got a pretty long bristle on it. I don't know. They, they seem to like come and go with their products a lot. So I don't know if you can still get this, whatever set this brush was from, but I can give you an idea of what, what to look for if you're looking through your stash. Anyway, I'm going to lighten this up. I'm going to lighten it up with try lightening it up with some lemon yellow and if that doesn't lighten it up enough I will add a little bit of white to it but I just don't want that green to get too milky oops I need to block my brush off oh there we go see we have a lot a bit more contrast there but you're gonna have so much more control with your brush if you use it at a 90 degree angle so that's why i'm always going that's why i'm always saying that 90, 90 degrees it just gives you a lot more control and you can use a round brush generally i don't use round brushes with gouache unless i'm watering it down look how inky that is it looks like whole milk when you get you have to get it to that consistency or it's not going to come off the brush but of course you could use a paint pen you could use if uh if Maybe your hand's not as steady for this technique. Use a paint pen. There's nothing wrong with that. Use the tools that get you where you want to go. All right. Let me take a little bit of... I'm just doing a little color, so I'm not digging in, so I'm using the brush. A little bit of definition on some of these trees. And this way, if I drag this over where I put all the colored pencil, then um, then it will kind of skip where the pencil is. I need to get a paper towel. I've got a big bead of water there. It'll skip over where the colored pencil is, and then you'll get that nice texture. You'll get shadows in between, and it will kind of um, – it'll uh, make the texture look a little bit more pronounced. So you can go in there and just kind of paint on top of the colored pencil. And it will resist in some spots and give you the texture you want elsewhere. It won't stick on top of the colored pencil. So generally you put colored pencil last, but you can also use it as a resist. So that's the thing that you just want to be aware of when you're doing mixed media is that you want to put things, you want to layer things up in a way that will allow the um, the painting to last and be archival and be nice to work, it, it be a pleasant process for you. But then just know every rule, there'll be a exception. Like you'd put color, you wouldn't put color pencil on before watercolor, but unless you want to do a resist or, you know, there's an exception to, it's like the English language is an exception to everything. There might just be a, a different technique that you want to try. And I encourage you to explore and find out what those what those techniques are so that you can get the most out of your supplies and have the most fun when you're creating. All right. 
I'm going to take a quick peek through my other cards and see if there's anything else that I really am dying to, uh, to alter. Let's see. We talked about maybe doing that one. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to leave him alone. I, I like him just the way he is. Uh, maybe that one. Maybe a little bit of texture on there. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I would just do little white gel pen highlights, but I used a, a nick to do those, so those are fine. Yeah. Let's see. Let's do a little bit onto the on our little on our little place here. We could do we could actually do gouache. I think that would be nice. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of white, a little bit of that buff. Titanium and white. And just kind of hit some of the highlight areas. I don't want to do too much. I really kind of like this, so. I don't think it needs too much, honestly. Take some of that buff and mix it in with that brown. Maybe just highlight the ridge a little bit. Using a, um, a flat brush and kind of stamping is a nice way to get um, like straight line type details. Oops, I overdid that shutter. Um, and then maybe just a little bit of detail in the brick. I could use that liner brush I just had actually because I don't want to do anything too extreme. I'm going to take some of this uh, kind of Indian red, a little bit of black, just tap in some little bricks. Trying to think if there's anything that we mentioned that we haven't used that I wanted to show you. There, I think that's really all I want to do to that. I think that's I think that's good enough going on. It's almost like some things, it's like if you if you want to do something to it, you're gonna to have to really add a lot to make much of a difference. And I think that would be the situation here. I could add some fine lining to it, but I don't necessarily think that would help it. I think it would actually make flatten it out a bit. So I'm going to leave that one. And then maybe just, maybe just uh, zhuzh up the skin a little bit. Add a little bit of this teal in here. ever seen those like um color corrector makeups that they have like they'll be like green and purple and things like that you can put them onto on your face under your makeup to like correct um correct your skin tone and stuff that's kind of like what you'd be doing here with the pencils and i don't want to and the only thing is though if you go over a dark with light, it's going to give you this texture and it might not be the texture you want or you want skin to be kind of smooth. And circling back around to the comment about do you use hot press paper? Portraits are a great place to use hot press paper because you often don't want that texture. And then if you're doing mixed media on a portrait, and if I went over hot press paper with colored pencils like this, it wouldn't show me show as much grain. Maybe a little bit of like a buttery yellow. Kind of an ochre yellow ochre color. Oh, I feel like I need like a lavender. In the shadows. Might be overdoing it, but it's fun. And then we could actually find like a really pale peach 
to put those uh, Brute Fooner macaron colors are so nice for uh, for pastels. This is kind of like a cream color. I mean, you could glaze over the whole thing with like a like a peach, and um, and the undertones would still show through, and you could get like more of a natural looking skin tone that way. I love these kind of like radical colors. Kind of gives me a youthful vibe, a little bit of a rebel, a little bit of a rebel vibe. Because we're rebels. We're adding mixed media to our watercolors, man. We're rebels, right? I like that. All right. I think I'm going to call this done. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Last call. Last call for mixed media questions. And I'll put it. Let me put a few out. To, we'll put the last two out. You can look at those while we're answering questions. Let's see. Can we put them in? Everything's backwards on my screen. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, Shaz asks, what's the question of the video about the sketchbooks, please? Uh, it will be posted on Friday, so it's not up yet, but it will be called, I think, sketchbook snowball method, or it might be called sketchbook avalanche because there's a lot of sketchbooks, but it is it's uploaded. It's ready to go. It'll, it'll post on Friday at noontime Eastern. You won't, uh, uh, and yes, I'm definitely a sketchbook floozy, Susan. <laughs> that, that video proves it. That's what I should, that's probably what I should title it. Um, but yeah, that'll be up on Friday. Um, Anula Draws asks, do you know the best brand would be for mixed media paper? One without too much texture and just enough tooth to it. I don't know about best and I don't know what you're, where you are and what you have available, what you have access to, but um, it's a couple brands that I love. Well, there's, you know, there's actually a lot of good mixed media papers out there. I would say if you want a smooth paper, I would recommend um, Strathmore's mixed media paper. They have, it comes in a variety of colors. Uh, my favorite is the tone tanned mixed media paper they make, and it's in a variety of sizes and it's quite affordable. You get 15 sheets, I believe. And um, I think there's, I think like the, a small, like um, six by eight pad is probably around $5. And then like a nine by 12 is probably around $12. And it goes all the way up to 11 by 14, I think. But that's a really nice, sturdy, like thick cardstock weight type, maybe even thicker than cardstock, nice smooth paper. It uh, has enough tooth to put some colored pencil on. Um, I may, mainly will use it for watercolor crayons and uh, marker and gouache. And I mean, it just, you can throw everything at it but it's not going to be as robust as like 100% cotton or some other mixed media papers like that. But that's a really good bet. And, you know, it comes in um, white, toned tan, toned gray, toned green, toned blue and black. And uh, great paper. Uh, I also like the, it's thinner, but I like the um, Canson XL mixed media pad. It's, it's a great sketchbook. It's 90 pound, I think. And it's, um, I would say it's kind of almost between like a hot, a soft press and a cold press. It's got a little more tooth to it. Um, so one, one of the pads even says rough, but I don't notice the texture to be any different than the other pad that I had. It just was like brighter white or something. So I don't know. That's a good one. It's very affordable. I think it's about 12 bucks for 60 sheets. And probably my favorite, but it's probably pricier. It depends on where you live. It would be Hunna Mule Bamboo Mixed Media Paper. That's It feels like watercolor paper, but um, you can even use marker on it. You can use everything from marker to watercolor. It's uh, it's bright white and it's it, part of their earth friendly line. So though there's three options right there that are really good. There are others, like I mentioned. Um, I think there's like, I think a lot of different brands of, of uh a lot of companies use mixed media paper from the same where the same factory. And because I've gotten a lot of very similar mixed media papers, um, usually store brands and they've been fine too. So, you know, just there's, there's some to go by anyway. I think if you stick with a, the name brand, you're probably going to do all right with mixed media paper. It seems to be one that, that more often than not a brand gets right. Or maybe I'm just, I have low standards. I don't know. 
but they those all perform well for me. Um, Mary Testa asks, are these all in the new course? <laughs> There's another 30 day course. Are they all different subjects? Yes, Mary, these are all from the brand new 30 days to better watercolor course. My 30 days to better painting course has all different subjects and that course is done in oils, acrylics, or gouache. I do 10 lessons in oils, 10 in acrylics, and 10 in gouache, but you can do all 30 in gouache, all 30 in acrylics, all 30 in oils if you prefer. Um, and they're all different subjects. So if you want to, I, I did the watercolor version because I had so many requests after I did the the other one to have a watercolor one. And I didn't want to repeat any subjects because I knew there'd be a certain amount of people that wanted to take both. And I didn't want them to pay twice to have the same image. You know what I mean? So yeah, all new stuff, but this is all just straight watercolor. It's a very limited supply. I might have linked in the video description of this video what the what we're using in that class, but I'm recommending the pretty excellent Mi Liang watercolors because they're 20 bucks. And but we're only using nine colors. So you could look through your stash. You probably have if you've been painting, you probably have the colors you need and don't have anything to buy. Um, watercolor greeting cards, because um, if you get like the box of 50 or 100, you have all kinds of extras to keep practicing and mailing off and paint some more and mail them off. And, you know, it's for I like I like projects that are practical so people don't feel like they've just wasted their time or um when you've painted something, sometimes you're like, well, what am I going to do with this? I, I don't want to frame it or it can just live in a sketchbook. But if you've got it on a card, you can actually mail it away. But you could do it in a sketchbook, too, if you want. And I people probably have brushes they, they like. But I recommended this set here um, by Artegria because I bought this during Prime Day because I've been curious about it. And they're really lovely brushes, $25 for the set. Actually, $24, I think. And um, we do all the all the projects with these 10 brushes. I just want to keep it affordable. And if nobody, if somebody had nothing, they could join and not have to spend an arm and a leg just to get started. Uh, hopefully that answers your questions. If not, leave a comment after the stream or in the chat if we're still here and I will answer that. Um, Heather B asks, hi, Lindsay and everyone, which brand makes your favorite watercolor sap green? Oh boy, I don't know if I could pick a favorite, but one that I really like is actually Olive Green by Sennelier. That's a beautiful, luminous, sap green color. But for whatever reason, their Olive Green is like my perfect sap green. But there, I mean, there's other good ones. That's that's a high on my list. Uh, Sheila Landry says, kind of a question, but more of a suggestion. You should put a link to the video at the end of the watercolor class so that when they come and see all the optional ways to enhance the paintings. Sheila, I've already done that actually. If you log on to uh, 30 Days to Better Watercolor, you're gonna see under uh, bonus content or extra content at the bottom of the, of the class cur curriculum, you will see that I have embedded this video um, there so people can watch that at any time, even if they're not, you know, they didn't catch it on YouTube, they'll see it there as well. And this will remain on my YouTube channel for you to come back to whenever you want guys, regardless if you're a student or not. Uh... Melissa Aldiseri says, not a question, but I totally feel you on the false eyelashes and eyeliner application. We need glasses to apply. Oh, yeah, it's rough. And I can't just get those reading glasses that swivel so you can do because my my prescription is different in each eye. So. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to look like a raccoon, I guess. I just can't do any fancy eye makeup. When I get when I get rich and famous, I'll have a makeup person that can make me look beautiful before Sat chat. <laughs> Let's. See. Um, Melissa also asks, are all the paints in the Dan Smith palette, Daniel Smith gouache? This is, there's very little cracking. I'm impressed. Um, this is Daniel Smith. This is a mixing set plus burnt umber. I think it's burnt umber I got. And then these here are the other colors in that first release of Daniel Smith paint that uh, my friend Angela shared with me. Yeah, it didn't crack bad at all. These others are Holbein and Daniel Smith and Lucas. So the yellow ochre is Lucas. That's Holbein, that's uh, M. Graham, that's M. Graham, that's Lucas, I think. That is, um, that's Holbein, M. Graham, M. Graham, M. Graham. No, that one's Holbein. So the M. Graham, M. Graham, and I think that was Lucas. So uh, yeah, yeah, they, they, they did good. They, uh, I'm really, I'm really impressed with the whole bind. Somebody said the whites don't rewet that well in whole bind, so I didn't put too much white down in my palette. But I haven't had an issue. Um, but I haven't used it that much. So, 
I probably am not. Uh, I would trust what other people say that have used it a lot. All right. Uh, I am just seeing if I missed any other questions. Okay, I see which one I, I've gotten to. I'm just going to go back from the end and see if any new ones popped up. Mary Fernandez asks, do people ever give an assessment of 10 or 12 Blank inside cards is a gift to people. Oh, an assortment. Um, if so, is there anything other than calligraphy pen you could use? Mary, I've given away, um, like my mother loves my handmade cards and I've given her packs of handmade cards. Um, I generally leave them blank uh, and just write them as needed. You can get rubber stamps that could that have sentiments on them if you want. What I usually do when I'm doing like a pack of cards for my mom is I will stamp, I have a little, like a little uh, banner a little die cut banner. So it looks like a little piece of paper with like notched edges. And I will just stamp happy birthday on a bunch, thinking of you, thank you with sympathy, a bunch of stuff like that. And then I'll include them with like sticky on the back, like a sticker, double sided tape on the back that has like a backing so it won't stick to each other. And then I put that in the, in the pack so they can put the sentiment on that they want. But you could definitely like type up a bunch of different sentiments you could glue on the inside of the cards. And I would just leave them unglued and let people put them in there. Another cool idea is to take post-it notes you could um, uh, either print or write on post-it notes or something. And that way people can reuse the cards after they've used it once the recipient can reuse the card. And I think that's kind of fun. Uh, Sheila asks, is M. Graham gouache made with honey too? I do believe so. That's probably why it doesn't crack that much. Erica says, hi, Lindsay and everyone. Can you please do a review on different watercolor papers, including the new from Jerry's Artorama, New York Central 100% cotton? Um, I haven't tried that paper yet. Uh, that would be that would be an interesting idea. It's it's tough to do a pay, a do a, a video all about paper. I did do one video all about paper, but more in the mixed media marker realm and uh, color pencil realm. Um, it's just um, it's it's hard because it's a it's hard to make it visually appealing. But I will think about that. I, but I don't have all the papers, and a lot of the papers I have are not necessarily just fresh off the presses. So I don't. It's so hard because companies change their formulation sometimes. Um. I'll have to think about that. That would be a very, a very, um, it'd be a very tricky video to film and pull together, but I will think about that. I think it's a great suggestion. Whether or not I have the ability to do it <laughs> uh, is another story. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of great paper out there, though. Oh, thank you, Nancy. She says, you already look beautiful during Sat Chat, <laughs> despite my... <laughs> Despite my sketchy eye makeup, uh, Clark Fine Art asks, you shared a sneak peek of Inktober day one. What colored inks were you using or did you use for the first piece? I used um, the colored fine liners and the black fine liners that I showed you here in the live stream. And I used Ohuhu alcohol markers and yeah, and uh, Ohuhu gel pens. I use alcohol markers for most of my Inktober stuff. Uh, okay, let's see. I think I've. I think I'm caught up. Yes, I think I am. Unless anything new just came in. All right, guys, you're awesome. Thank you so much. 252 people right now. Wow, that's crazy. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gives you some ideas on what you might want to do to any watercolor paintings you feel just don't have the pizzazz that you want them to. Um, it's it's such a wonderful way just to use all your supplies. When you combine supplies together, so you can have colored pencils and you can have watercolors and they're fine on their own. But when you combine them, then you've just got a third thing you have. So you don't just have colored pencils and watercolors. Now you have color pencils and watercolors that can make something totally new. And when you add a new supply to your stash, think about is this going to just duplicate something I already have? Or is this going to make the other things I have way more useful? So you've just uh, have seen today how your watercolors are made way more useful by adding these other medias to them. So um, think about that as you curate your collection. Think about that before you get rid of something that maybe maybe you got colored pencils, but you're like, maybe they made your hands hurt. Maybe you just didn't, it took too long. You didn't like it. 
well, it takes a long time to do a colored pencil piece, but it doesn't take that long just to zhuzh up uh, watercolor painting with your colored pencils. So before you make that final hasty decision where like, okay, I don't like this material, I'm getting rid of it. Say, wait a minute, let me find a painting I don't like. Let me see if I can add to it and if it will make it a little bit better. Because oftentimes if there's a supply that, and especially if you know it's a decent supply, uh, but you're just not getting along with it, you might just not be speaking its language yet, or you may not have found a way for it to work with your style yet. And once you find that out, um, you can really make some magical stuff. And I think it's a nice idea to have a little bit of everything in your studio so you can pull those little solutions out when you have a painting that's not working that well. Uh, like I said, thank you so much for watching. If you're curious about this class where we did all the 30 watercolors, it is 30 days to better painting. It is on launch special for 50% off until Sunday. So the regular price on the class is $99. It's on sale for $49.50. There's a discount link in the video description. If for some reason that discount doesn't pop up, there's a coupon code in the video description too. I like to put everything out there so people know like what it should be, what it costs regular, what it should cost. So if they go to, they click in on a link or something and it doesn't, I just want to make sure they know how to get the deal. Uh, it should show up automatically, but if it doesn't, uh, there it is. And it's on sale through Sunday. And yeah, thank you. Oh, we got a couple more questions here. Snack says, are the brushes you used a soft faux squirrel? And do they, or, uh, or do they snap like sable? They are a faux squirrel. They are the Artegria brushes here. They've got, this is a dry snap here. Let me wet one and show you. Yeah, they, they have, uh, they have more snap than like a faux squirrel, but not as much as like, um, well, maybe as much as a, as a sable. I don't use Kalinsky sable, but this is the wet snap. Um, let me put this paper underneath it so you can see. So that's the, that's the wet snap. So yeah, they're pretty snappy. They don't get waterlogged and tired like a um, like a real squirrel will. So I highly recommend them. They're they're a great bang for the buck. Twenty four. I mean, tw ten brushes for twenty four bucks. You really can't beat that. Um, I'm just gonna. I'll scroll back one more time. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. Uh, I don't wanna sign off if somebody still has a question. But yeah, I would welcome anyone that is curious about watercolor that wants to join to join us for that class. There's a lot of great content and you get lifetime access, which means if you want to come back in a year and redo all the lessons, you can. If you want to paint something 10 times, you can. Uh, you have access to that and um, you can always come back to it. So, yeah. And that is all. Thank you guys so much for coming by. Please hit that like button before you go. That helps YouTube. Um, show this video to other people and we'll see you next time. Happy crafting. Bye.